did they first arrive, the big men? There was a time before them, not too distant in memory. The coming was not sudden, though. Despite being the big men, it seemed they had somehow crept up on us. It suffices to say that, that they were here, and were as much a part of everyday living as the sky and the trees. No one really asked questions of when and how and why, except children, usually. It was no different with the big men. And like the sky or the earth itself, they played an ever-present part of each of our lives, though you could easily go weeks without thinking of them specifically. They went out of their way to avoid interfering with us, something that must have been very difficult for them. Occasionally one would accidentally bend some railroad track or scrape a few bricks off the underside of a bridge, but they always seemed apologetic, even a little embarrassed at these occurrences. There is that question, of course, of their actual size. They were distinctive more than anything for being large, which is why they were regarded as the big men. It is unfortunate that no attempt was ever made to measure one, though it seems they would have found that a little hurtful to their dignity. That they were bigger than you or me is clear. An attempt to shake hands with one would be an awkward, even futile gesture. But to describe them as giants would be an error. There was nothing monstrous or out of proportion about them. They were really just like ordinary men, only bigger. It's difficult to describe to someone who did not live then. Though the effects of their mass were evident, they trod upon the ground no more loudly than you or I. Some described them as an enlargement of a person, a blown-up photocopy, though this would imply some fuzziness or loss of fidelity that certainly wasn't present. Instead, they were more like an amplification of an ordinary man, like a voice echoed across a canyon, sonorous, full, and grand. Their actual demeanor, though, was hardly one of a shout. Indeed, their voices, on the very rare occasions they were heard, were scarcely louder than whispers. Except, of course, for their singing. Though almost always sad and low, the singing of a big man outside one's window at night could give a sense of security and calm. No one seemed quite able to remember the words, or even the tunes, but their songs were rich with feeling, reflection, and love of that which is no more. Of course, many ignored these songs, took them for granted, and distracted themselves in the trials and rewards of everyday living. Perhaps this is why one day the big men left us. One morning we arose, and each of us, even the most callous, was filled with a profound sense of loss and abandonment. The big men, who had become part of the very rhythm of our lives, were gone. Though they were rarely noticed and served no useful function, really, it was like a limb had been removed them you don't consciously realize you have until it's gone. And they were gone. The nature of their departure made it perfectly clear they were gone forever. In spite of the wild lamentations of some, society did not collapse. Trains ran on time, crime did not rise, depression and anxiety swelled only slightly and soon returned to their normal levels. We will never really know why they left us though it is generally accepted to be our fault. Many of us pray every night for their return, knowing full well in our hearts that we are forever alone with each other.